You can turn in your Bible to Romans chapter 10. I had a brother uh, send me this link to this uh, Ed Fakinger guy, Ed Fenninger, calls himself, and uh, and he says he has a video. I'm going to put the screenshot up here. You can see it. He says there is no salvation for the unbeliever today in Romans 10. Then he has here also heaven or hell, Romans 3 or Romans 10, which is the gospel. Okay, now, um, I'm not going to play any of the guy's videos because I've seen these people, um, these idiot hyper-dispensationalists. What they do is they pride themselves in their ignorance and they basically want to draw you into these, these things where they just cut the scriptures to pieces. I have a good book showing this thing here by Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. You know, good illustration of a hyper dispensationalist. The bread of life down here is one of the words of the word of, or one of the names of the word of God. They're blindfolded and they're just hacking the thing to pieces. Very, very true. Um, these people, uh, these hyper dispensationalists, uh, I have met some that I believe are saved and they've just, you know, they got so far away from the Lord, they're so backslidden. Um, they don't witness to people. They're just, they're just useless. And they get into this thing of just like, just cutting the scriptures into these little tiny shreds. And I mean, this verse, I mean, a hyper dispensationalist is somebody that makes, they cut up the, the dispensation that we are currently in. The church age has different sections within it. There's the, you know, the church of the one body. There's the church of, you know, the, that was there before Paul. And then, and then we have Paul and the hyper dispensationalist is mentally ill. And they'll can, they'll actually say, not only is it just Paul that we're supposed to be reading and you know that that's our doctrine they'll actually say that Paul is preaching to other people within the Pauline epistles and that's what you see there with Ed Fenninger he is literally saying that Romans chapter 10 is a false gospel for Christians today so in other words Paul made this very serious error that part of his the book of Romans is actually doctrinally for people in the time of Jacob's trouble, and it will send somebody to hell today. It's like, okay, and then and you see them, you'll watch them, and it's just like, you know, this person's wrong, this person's saying prayer, this person had a prayer, that person's there, they're all teaching false gospels. Who's teaching the right gospel? They themselves. I remember way back when I was uh, dealing with Martin Richling. Martin Richling was the you know originator of this this ridiculous thing that prayer is a work, it's going to send people to hell, the Romans' road to damnation and everything else. Um, you know, which, here, put up another picture of Ed Fenninger here. He actually says, Satan loves the Roman road to damnation. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, that means that anybody that's ever gone through the book of Romans, showing somebody that you're a sinner, that Jesus Christ died for you, you want to call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, sorry, they're lost. You know, again, it has to be their particular favorite verse of Scripture. You can't take the totality of the Pauline epistles and say, okay, explain to somebody. You have, I mean, you take somebody through the Scriptures and you say, okay, are you, if you died tonight, would you go to heaven or hell? Do you know? I think I'd go to heaven. Well, let me show you what the Bible says about you as a sinner. You take them to their early part of the book of Romans and you, and you lead them through and you say, you see, all of sin comes short of the glory of God. But you see, Jesus Christ died for sinners. Let me show you another scripture. Let me show you another scripture. And you take them through multiple scriptures. And you see, the reason one of, one of the big reasons hyper-dispensationalists don't know that is because they aren't soul winners. You know, I know Greg Miller challenged Ed Fenninger because, you know, Ed came out and he's attacking anybody, you know, that disagrees with him. Everybody's false except for Ed Fenninger. And, um, but, you know, Greg Miller came out and he said, okay, the gospel that you're preaching, Ed, film a video of you out on a street corner preaching it on a street corner. He wouldn't do it to save his life. Of course not. These people don't ever take somebody through the scriptures. I have. All right. And, you know, I've, I've preached the gospel a bunch of times. You say, well, I've never seen the videos of it. Um, let me just explain something. This is a ministry. This is not drama entertainment that I'm going to take some video camera and stick it in somebody's face and say, if you die tonight, would you go to heaven or hell? Let me get the conviction on their face. Let me get some drama. Maybe I can get some tears. That would get me some good views. I'm not about to do that. When I go out in public and I'm out there, my wife witnesses to people, I witness to people. When we do it, we're not going to film the people. 
Why? I don't want to mess up the fact that they might get saved or lost or whatever, you know, I, I, or their salvation there. All right? I don't want to mess that up. I'm not going to humiliate the person and say, hey, I'm going to film this personal time for you so I can get some views on YouTube. <laughs> not going to do it. But I have taken people through the different scriptures, not just in Romans, other places too. But oh no, no, it has to be Romans chapter 3. It must be Romans chapter 3. That alone is the gospel. Crazy losers is what they are. Just hack the Bible to pieces and, you know, this is for us, that's for not for us, this is for us, that's not for us. Pauline epistles, there's parts for us, there's parts that will send you to hell. I mean, it's crazy. And we're going to get on into this a little bit here in this study. But um, just wanted to say, I mean, I literally had a guy, was it Marco Ponce or something like that, I think, um, and he was posting my videos, uh, the Real Bible Version Issue Exposed. He put it on uh, Vimeo, I think, and he had like, you know, getting some really good views. And all of a sudden, Martin Richling got his claws into the guy and just ruined him. And I said, uh, back when you were first putting videos on and telling people how to be saved and whatever, I said, were you saved or lost? He said, I was lost because I believed in the sinner's prayer. I said, okay, when was your salvation? When was the time of your salvation? And he said, when I found Martin Richling. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and these wingnuts accused me of, you know, having a cult or something like that? I don't think so. All right, but let's 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 look at Romans chapter 10. We're going to read the whole chapter here, all right? And I'm going to show you how they do it. I'm going to show you what the Bible actually is teaching. Romans chapter 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Now the hyperdispensationalist says, oh, whoa, see, this is about Israel. It's not for Christians. It's only for the nation of Israel. This is for the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> okay, well, princess, let me just ask you a question. If uh, Romans chapter 10 is the gospel for the time of Jacob's trouble, where they're calling upon the name of the Lord, please show me a, a verse that says, call upon the name of the Lord in the book of Revelation. For the time of Jacob's trouble. Could you show me that, please? How about Matthew chapter 25? Matthew chapter 24? Why are they calling upon the name of the Lord to be saved? I'll give you a hint. They aren't. Oh, but that's in the, in the, in the time of Jacob's trouble, they're going to have to preach Romans chapter 10 and ignore the other chapters. Even though Romans chapter 11 is all about the Jews and Israel. But let's see what it actually is talking about here. Romans chapter 10, verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Is that true for today? Yes. Yes. There are some, I've, I've learned some things from some of these rabbis and things like that. They'll bring out stuff on the Hebrew you know, letters and things, and I mean, I've, I've learned some really good stuff from some Jewish rabbis out there. They have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. They reject Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, verse 6. Verse 3, For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For... Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to every one that believeth. Is that true for today? No, brother, this is only the gospel for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy in the head. Verse 5. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart. Remember that. That is the word of faith which we preach. The word of faith which we preach? But this is for the time of Jacob's trouble? Then why on earth is Paul preaching it? 
compare Scripture with Scripture, brethren. There's nothing in Romans chapter 10 that contradicts any other part of the Pauline epistles. Not one word. But you see, these Satanists, they want to get you away from calling upon the name of the Lord. I did a whole study on the thing about his prayer work way back when, when he first came here to Maine, three years ago, three plus years ago. I did a whole study on this thing, debunking it. And Richling went bye-bye, and I thank the Lord for it, that that devil was off the internet. But now we have his little understudy, his little boyfriend, little girlfriend, Ed Fenninger, and his little girlfriend, Kevin Zacker, and then there's a whole bunch of other, these little imps, these little devils out there that aren't doing anything for the Lord. But notice, verse 8, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. And here's the big controversial two verses that will send, that sent, you know, millions apparently of Christians to hell. Verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart, what do we read in verse 8? Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. And shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. What's wrong with that? I mean, my word. Who has, who has salvation? The Lord? By grace are ye saved through faith? Right? God's grace. It's his grace that any of us get saved. It's our job to have faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. So you come to the Lord and you say, God, I'm sorry for being a sinner. I put my faith in Jesus Christ. Please, Lord, don't send me to hell. And you cry out to the Lord. And that leads somebody to hell. You see how perverted and satanic these hyper-dispensationalists are? Verse 11, For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. But look at verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Wait a second here. There is a difference between the Jew and the Greek. Keep your hand there in Romans chapter 10 and go back to Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. Look at verses 4 down through 8. Tribes, 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 tribes. The Jews. Verse 9, After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God for ever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, um, These are those that call upon the name of the Lord. No, actually, it doesn't say that. It says, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They washed their robes. And there's a distinction between Jews and Gentiles. Your text here in Romans chapter 10, verse 12 says, There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Galatians 3, verse 28 and 29. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Galatians chapter 3. Romans chapter 10, teaching the same thing. And yet, Revelation chapter 7 says there is a difference between the two. You see? So what the devils right now are whispering into the ears of Ed Fenninger and, and all of his little buddies, what the devils are whispering into their ears right now is saying, Galatians 3.28 it's, 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 it's for the tribulation. It's not for us today. Cut that part out of the Bible. That's a different dispensation. <laughs> you know, and then you get these other Satanists out there, the non-dispensationalists, and they call me a hyper-dispensationalist. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I just, you know, writing back and forth with this wingnut Sam Adams down in Florida. 
And he's like, you're a hyperdispensationalist. And I said, do you even know what a hyperdispensationalist is? He didn't. He had no idea. He has no clue about a lot of things. But, but look at Romans chapter 10, verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a false gospel if you are a hyperdispensationalist. According to Ed Fenninger there, that will send you to hell. That right there. Let's finish up the chapter here quick. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring good, glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Can't use that. That verse does not apply to you today. This is for saints in the time of Jacob's trouble. Paul just, you know, forgot to mention those exact details. Verse 18. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold, and saith, I was found of them that sought me not, I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Paul is explaining to the Gentiles the history of the Old Testament. Those things that are written aforetime are written for our learning. Paul says over in Corinthians, we're supposed to understand what happened to the Jews in the Old Testament because it applies so much to us today. That's all Paul's saying here. He's saying, I have, I have this, you know, the thing here at verse 1, my, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Yeah, my heart's desire is that for today. I like to hear when I hear a Jew get saved. But look at Romans chapter 11. Verse 1, I say then, God, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham and of the, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. And it goes down. We're not going to keep reading there for sake of time. But turn over to uh, verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Israel as a nation, the Jewish people, most of them are blind. But it's in part. What does that mean? Some of them get saved. So when Paul says over in Romans chapter 10, verse 1, his prayer to God, or his heart's desire, excuse me, in prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. He's not saying national salvation in that passage. He's simply saying, I'd like to see some of them get saved. Okay? That's what's going on there. Blindness in part has happened to Israel. There's still some that will get saved. The small part there, that little remnant that gets saved. That's what's going on. <laughs> and you know, I, I, I keep wanting to say, I don't know why these people can't get it, but I do. They're lost. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. That's why these people don't get it. But I'll show you another little screenshot here. He says, uh, here's another one. He says, no blood in Romans chapter 10, no, no blood in Romans 10 equals no salvation. It, it just, it's insanity. You know, and of the, of the ones that I would say that, get, you know, that are saved and they get into this hyper dispensational stuff, God will put them on the shelf, and they don't. If they don't repent, they are going to be going home to be with the Lord, right? God is not going to allow you to get into this level of scripture perversion and just mental illness, and allow you to keep going on and and causing the lost world to blaspheme His word. And I've seen it. I've seen some of these brethren that get into this hyper dispensational stuff. Their lives just go like that down. And the ones that are leaders in, the, in this whole movement, they're lost. I don't believe that they're saved for one minute. But, uh, you know, 
Romans chapter 10, there's no blood. There's no blood in Romans chapter 10, so it can't be about salvation. The blood must be there. Oh, really? Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. These people are so easy to refute. It's just an insult. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. I mean, is it any clearer than this? This is the gospel. Paul is saying this is the gospel that he's preaching. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. They don't like that either. You can actually believe in vain. They'll, they'll twist that. Well, no, that, it, it says believed in vain, but it doesn't really mean believed in vain. Funny how they can do that. Verse 3, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Okay? And that He was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. And it goes on to say about other brethren there and stuff seeing Him. Um, where was the blood? Romans chapter 10 damns people to hell because there's no blood in it. Where's the blood in 1 Corinthians 15? You better get out your little uh, butter knife there and start whacking on the uh, bread of life again. Well, um, it, uh, well, uh, you see, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, the, um, the, 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 the thing there, um, you see, um, maybe the blood was in the original autographs and they, it was a copyist error and that's why we don't see it here, you know. It should have been, instead of said, saying Christ died for our sins, it should have actually been, in the original Greek, it should have been Christ bled for our sins. There we go. <laughs> <You know? laughs> crazy people. Absolutely crazy. Let's look up a couple other verses here real quickly. While we're playing Kick the Hyper Dispensationalist Day. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Didn't happen to see anything about calling upon the name of the Lord. I mean, Romans chapter 10. You just take the chapter, cut it out of Romans, and you say, this is for us today. This is our gospel. And why is it that Romans 10 will damn somebody to hell today because there's no blood, but in the time of Jacob's trouble, wouldn't you have the same problem? Wouldn't there not be blood there either in Romans chapter 10? Yeah, show you one other little screenshot of a funny bunny here. Um, Christians should hate the sinner's prayer; it corrupts the gospel. Okay, and you know I put that up there. I'm against these just you know one, two, three, repeat after me sinner's prayers. You know every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. If you're here today and you don't know for sure that you go to heaven when you die, I would like you to pray this prayer. Say, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus, you know, and they take you through this thing. If you prayed that prayer for the first time and you prayed it in faith, then I can tell you today that you'll be going to heaven when you die. Blah, 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 blah. You know, uh, uh no, that is fake. I am against that. But if you hand out a gospel tract and that gospel tract has a little model prayer in it after it takes you through what salvation is and you get to the end of the thing and it says, if you would like to receive Jesus Christ, pray something like this. And it leads you into some kind of little sinner's prayer. Lord, dear Lord, I'm, I know I'm a sinner. I know that, that the wages of sin is death. I understand that I'd be going to hell if I died right now. I want to put my faith in Jesus Christ. I believe that He died on the cross to pay for my sin. That's not going to send you to hell. And as a Christian, I am not going to ever hate that. All right? But see, when you have the devil inside of you, like Edward Fenninger does, Mr. Saved by the Roman Catholic Church as a very young boy, that's what he says, when you have Satan in, in you, like this hyper-dispensationalist, you will hate the sinner's prayer. And I don't mean the one that the modern Babel buildings do. You'll hate people praying and calling upon the name of the Lord. Why? Because misery loves company. And that miserable, lying, false prophet is going to burn in hell. And I've said it back, you know, and he wants you to join him. That's what I'm saying. He wants lost people to join him. He doesn't want people calling upon the name of the Lord. You know, 
me just give you a little story here, and then I'm going to say some other things. Um, right now, my son is downstairs napping, and he's going through some potty training right now and things. And uh, so we tell him, you know, if you have to go to the bathroom, you call upon daddy's name. You say, dad, daddy. Why? Because he needs my help. You know, it's a natural thing for a lost person to say, dear God, he's not their father yet, but he's the author of salvation. And you start, you come and you say, God, I need help. God, please help me. I'm a sinner. I don't want to go to hell when I die. Completely natural for a sinner. So I will say this, because I said this way back with Martin Richling. I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ rebukes you, Ed Fenninger, Kevin Zacker, and any other hyper-dispensationalist that is trying to turn people away from calling upon the name of the Lord. If you are saying that Romans chapter 10 will send people to hell, then I pray that the Lord damns your soul to hell and takes you off this earth before you damn any people, any more people with you. May the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you.